My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today we're taking a look at the Sonicware Mega Suits. It is a Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive inspired synth. Think like uh, uh, a Sonic, think uh, Streets of Rage, and of course, Altered Beasts, one of my favorites. That is the sound that you are working with when you get this. Now, uh, they sent me this device. So just so you know, hashtag ad, they sent me this device. Uh, I didn't have a say in it. I just said, I, they just said, hey, we're going to send you a thing. And I was like, wow, that sounds cool. And they're like, here's your tracking number. We already sent it. I got it like the next fucking day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonicware, for trusting me with this. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty well versed. You can't really see. But back here, there's like one, two, three, four Sonicware devices already. So it's kind of like a buy four, get one freak type deal. So I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> you almost missed my boobs? What? Boo <laughs> to add a little bit of authenticity to this, one of the people they sent this to is uh, Yuzo Koshiro, who is a composer for Streets of Rage. So if you hear like Streets of Rage songs, if you're familiar with the, uh, that soundtrack, I went through and I listened to it, not being familiar with like, you know, some of those game soundtracks and like pretty fucking good. <laughs> On this device, uh, he has actually programmed in a bunch of his own sounds. You could probably see here, it says Yuzo on it. So these are all his sounds that he designed for this, which is kind of cool. I mean, honestly, it's like to be able to have somebody who helped, you know, shape a certain era, especially a certain like IP franchise worth of sound, two banks worth of sound. So, I mean, that's there's there's uh, it was like seven or eight banks that come with this. So basically, this thing is a good chunk his work. <laughs> if you're somebody who is maybe looking for something that you can kind of jam with, right? This is perfect. These, all these little devices are like made for that. It's got a battery set up in the back. You can put a bunch of double A's in it. I got a bunch of uh, rechargeables in there. So if it turns off in the middle of this performance, I'm sorry. It does have a pretty simple like sequencer setup. It's got six different tracks you could play with. And each track can have its own time signature and it can have its own length. I have a couple of tracks that I've already set up and played on here. Some that I've already played on, like I have a, a AKA Mike Beats Instagram channel where I post a lot of this stuff. This one in particular, let me see how this sounds. Yeah, here we go. So I'm gonna strip everything out. So first, the drums track, right now what you're hearing is just the drum track. It's basically playing a couple of sounds uh, with a low attack, I think, uh, and then that is basically creating this kind of shh, shh sound. And this is from the FM generator. Turn that one off. There you go. The FM generator, tone generator, is a, uh, what is it, like four, four, fuck, look at this thing, all right? Look, this is what you use if you want to edit the actual FM sounds. And you put this over top of your device, kind of like so, and then you, you hit a keystroke combination, and then that's gonna take you into the FM uh, sound editing features. So you can see how there's a couple of different examples right there at the top, and it shows like where the different, all the different sequences that you could take these four generators and you can loop them into each other. And so what that does is it creates all these crazy sounds, and then you know FM synthesis being as infinitely like capable as it is, you can create effectively almost whatever sound you want. Oh man, it's just a good sound. Like I thought for sure that it was going to be a device that I could only really make like Genesis sounds out of, right? Which I should have learned my lesson because with the 8-bit warps, it's crazy. The screams and the crazy growls and the and the digitized like weird bases you can create with it. Like I said, I don't even get into like the algorithms and shit like that. I don't know how this stuff works. I don't get the algorithms or any of that stuff. You know, like, <laughs> and negative pH comes out. <laughs> it's capable, man. It's got some gritty sounds to it. You know what I mean? Like it was said earlier. It's like this thing, the Sega Genesis does have a bit of a grimy t uh, sound to it. So when you're writing stuff, it just gets kind of dirty. You can make it clean, right? Play the ambient track for you. could be kind of clean. Okay, so this thing has what's called parameter recording, right? Parameter recording lets you take some of your knob twists and everything because part of these synths and groove boxes is basically knob twiddling, right? You're sitting here like psh, 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 trying to turn this thing, get this cool sound out of it, right? This will record those things. Uh, that way you can play over here with like these knobs and do something cool. And then you come over here and play with these knobs and like, you know, do something cool 
while these ones play by themselves because you recorded those parameters into the parameter recording element. Let me show you what that sounds like here. So I have a sound that I put into this particular song that by itself it's kind of a static, it's kind of a rippling effect, right? When I hit play, it's also going to play the parameters that I recorded into this, and you'll hear how it sweeps in and out. See what I'm saying? All the tracks are capable of doing this, and then you're able to have a just a more robust, just a deeper sound. And that applies again <laughs> to every track. So the drums on this track, I have hooked up so that it changes the drum preset per note. Individual notes. I want this particular note from a one preset and this particular note to be from another preset. And you'll hear So yeah, it's kind of skipping around, right? <laughs> and then you could put it in stutter mode, and then you could kind of play with some of those sounds, right? So, <laughs> this song, I actually really like this song. Uh, I'm still, I'm still working on it. Still work in progress. For those of you who maybe you don't want to write your own shit, this is something that I saw when I was going through some of the other videos from people making songs with this. Some of them were not using any of the built-in sequence functions. They were using it just like a sound box, basically, a sound generator. This track that I'm going to show you guys, um, this is uh, an existing Sega Genesis track, one of my favorite games, and I had to try to get it in here and see what it sounded like. Just for like reference. <laughs> Right? This shit hits so hard. So what I did was I took that, I put it into Reason, and I pumped it into here, and I had the MIDI and everything hooked up, and it's not going to be playing. Uh, it's just going to be used as a sound bank. So you don't even have to touch it. I don't think. I mean, I'm going to get the button. We'll see if it works. I love it, man. <laughs> this song, this song like goes back for me, you know? It's like I could put the specific, it was like 19, like what, 89 or something like that. And I was staying at my grandma's house in fucking San Juan Capistrano. And this guy down the street named Morgan, he had a Sega Genesis, he had Alter Beast. And I'd go over there and play just that game. And so this track, man, stuck with me. It was basically that summer, the summer of 89, if there was ever a song made for it. That's basically this for me. One of the things I like to do is whenever I go on a trip or we go camping or something, I try to take one of these devices with me. That way I can just like sit on a, around a campfire where everybody's asleep with the headphones on and just pray that, you know, while I'm sitting there like working on a beat that I don't have a bear to come up behind me and maul me. You know, it's fucking A plus, man. You can't really beat that kind of experience, you know? Yeah, middle of nowhere, just jam. I've seen some of those and I kind of want to try that. You know, if you just see somebody like with like a synthesizer and it's just like in the middle of like a forest or something or by a lake. There's the ones where people are like playing and there's the ones where they just hit play and they just leave it alone. And I'm like, dang, that's cool. Like make a video, you don't have to be in it. Just a beautiful view with like your little mega synthesis out by the lake, you know, while you're fishing. And then you just hear. It's so relaxing. Stop scaring the fish! <laughs> God, I put so much work into some of these tracks. Just each individual sequence has access to all of these knobs, right? All of these, especially all the ones on the white, right? And they all can be automated. Even the pattern selectors, you could change the entire sound if you wanted to for one note or two or whatever. Uh, and that's all in like one sequence. And then you go to the next one. And then you go to the next one. As much as I love writing on software, being able to take this shit anywhere, like I said, battery operated. Sometimes I sit in the truck, we go camping. Like, leave me alone, I'm gonna sit in the truck and write some music. 
You still like Reason? Yeah, me too, you said. Hey, I do. I use Reason, actually. Um, I'm using Reason to, for this demonstration right here. Now, I don't use Reason at all. I mostly do hardware stuff. Reason gives you, like, infinite power, right? Infinite power basically makes you feel like, well, now that I could do anything, I kind of don't want to do anything. I could sit here forever and tweak every single knob endlessly and have 40 different automation lanes. But what I really want is to be limited. I want to go back to, I can only do blank. I can only have X number of notes that are playing simultaneously. I can only have a song length of X or Y or whatever. That's what is drawing me back to hardware and groove boxes because I think that, you know, I, I kind of like that, uh, those limitations. You always say too much because then you get lost. Yeah, that's what it is. You, you get fucking lost, you know? There's so many things that you could do. You know, and it's funny because, you know, I preach about this thing having all these like recent devices having the ability to like unlatch their note resolution and note length or their uh, uh, their sequence length per sequence, right, or per track. Um, uh, you have uh, access to parameter recording, so you can record uh, like I mean, one, two, three, four, eight, ten knobs. You got ten different knobs that are all like moving at the same time if you wanted to, and program all those elements in. You know, it's like that sounds like a lot. When you compare it to software, which is like infinite, like it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice that you would only have like so much you could do on it. <laughs> That's pretty much the gist of the device without getting into like some of the actual media elements in terms of like how to uh, generate your own or create or, or architect your own FM synthesis patches and save them to one of the million different banks that are available to you to save them to like I mean, we're kind of at a point where it's like, yeah, we just write music on this thing or we write music on something else and then plug in one of these little MIDI cable devices, plug one of these guys in there. You just drag in and drop in MIDI files for your favorite video games and you're playing them on this device and you can jam out with it like little effects or something like that or whatever you want. Sonicware Liven, Mega Synthesis. Now break it. I've never seen anybody do that. I've seen people smash keyboards like keyboard controllers, but I've never seen anybody like take like an actual like groove box or something like that, like jamming out for like Instagram or something like that. And then at the end, they're just like, yeah, just smash it. All this started with a Kickstarter. Yeah, huh? Yeah. All this started with the 8-bit warps. This was the first one that I got on a Kickstarter. I'm sorry, Tanneros got on Kickstarter, right? And you sent this to me. And then here we are. Many, many, many devices later. Thanks, Tan. I was thinking of having a cool array where I can have like all of these things and all of them like spidering in to like the main device. I get to sit here with all my shit, turn all the knobs. Hell yeah.